Hello, my name is Hanno Rhein, and in this video number 9 of the Rebound YouTube tutorial series, I'll show you how to accelerate simulations with the new WHFAST 512 integrator. WHFAST 512 is a Wisdom Holman type integrator. There is a separate video on Wisdom Holman integrators, and I encourage you to look at that before continuing with this video if you haven't done so yet. WHFAST 512 is specifically optimized for a small number of planets, with specifically a number of eight planets. It uses AVX 512 instructions that are available on high-end Intel and AMD CPUs to make that possible. AVX 512 is a paradigm that allows you to use a single instruction to perform multiple data operations. Without going into too much detail about the Wisdom Home Integrator itself, there are two important parts that we need for this video. You need to understand that the Wisdom Home Integrator is split into a Keplerian part and an interaction part. In the Keplerian part, we assume that there is only one planet around a single object. We evolve the planet around its Keplerian orbit. For that, we need to solve Kepler's equation. There is no closed form solution available to solve Kepler's equation, but we can solve it using a fast iterative solver. In the interaction step, we calculate the remainder of the planet's trajectory, namely the interactions between other planets that we have left out before. These are just force calculations between planets, and we can solve this part of the Wisdom Home Integrator explicitly in a closed form solution. The Wisdom Holman Integrator works particularly well when these additional perturbations from planets interacting on other planets are small compared to the motion of the planet around the central object. This is typically true for planetary systems, but other hierarchical astrophysical systems um, might be applicable here as well. Now, accelerating a Wisdom Holman Integration using a GPU, using MPI or OpenMP can be tricky. It might help to accelerate simulations with a large number of particles, or you might be able to simulate multiple simulations in parallel by spreading it out over different cores. What is very difficult to achieve, though, is to accelerate one n-body simulation with a small number of particles. This is due because whether you run on a GPU or in a shared memory system, you will have communication overhead. And because each individual wisdom home and part is relatively short, you need to communicate a lot, many times per second. And this will slow down your simulation a lot in a, such a way that having multiple cores might not necessarily, necessarily help you. It might slow you down instead. What WHFAST 512 does, on the other hand, is different. It uses the fact that on these systems with AVX 512, we have registers that are 512 bit wide. In these registers, we can fit in eight floating point numbers. Then, using the AVX 512 instructions, we can use one CPU instruction to operate on all those eight floating point numbers at the same time, and therefore, in principle, achieve a speed up of about a factor of eight. In addition to just using these AVX 512 instructions, we've made several other important improvements in WHFAST 512. One part we, that we do differently than before is the interaction part. In the interaction step, we now have sorted the order in which we um, perform these interaction calculations specifically tuned to AVX 512. For AVX 512 instructions, whenever we have to communicate data across 250-bit lanes, we incur a performance penalty. So in these matrices that you see here, um, each pixel is indicating one planet-planet interactions that we need to calculate. And we do that by first focusing on the left top and bottom right quadrant of this matrix, then performing one swap operation across 256-bit lines, and then do the remaining operations. This is much faster than doing it, for example, um, row by row or column by column. We also optimize the Kepler part of the wisdom Holman step. Here, we no longer check for the convergence of the Kepler solver. We have instead a fixed number of iterations. This has the advantage that we can more closely following the SIMD paradigm. We don't have to assume 
that some planets might finish their iteration in the Kepler solver earlier than others. Now all the planets perform the same number of iterations in the Kepler solver and everything is always in sync. Because of these optimizations and because of the fact that we use AVX512 registers, WHFAST512 comes with several requirements and restrictions. First of all, you need a CPU that actually supports AVX512 instructions. Your laptop or your desktop computer, for example, might not, whereas in many cases, a computing cluster that you have access to will properly support these instructions. Once you have a machine that supports AVX512, you then need to compile rebound with AVX512 flag set to one. By default, AVX512 is not enabled. Furthermore, you can only run simulations with a maximum of eight planets. It is all in principle possible to use AVX512 instructions with more planets, but that requires additional logic, which we have not implemented. So for the time being, you're restricted to planetary systems with eight planets or less. We have built-in support in WSFAST 512 for the inclusion of GR, specifically GR precession, in the form of an additional potential. However, no additional forces can be added, so you cannot use Rebound X with WSFAST 512. We are also restricted in our choice of the coordinate system that we use for the wisdom Holman splitting. Here, we need to use a democratic heliocentric coordinate system. We cannot use Jacobi coordinates. Once again, this is due to the SIMD paradigm. We need to make sure that all our operations are always in sync, which would not be the case for wisdom Holman in Jacobi coordinates. And lastly, we need to use a constant time step. We cannot change the time step in the middle of our simulation without recalculating some constants that we've pre-calculated once for the simulation. With all these restrictions, if you can use WS512 for your problem, you might be in for a quite significant speed up. If you have one planetary system with eight planets, you get an almost five times speed up compared to WHFAST 512. This is significant. Remember that WHFAST has already the word fast in it. It was already very fast to begin with. Now you get an additional five times speed up. If you manage to have a fewer number of systems, for a fewer number of planets, for example, four planets, then you can use one AVX 512 register to um, serve eight planets. So two systems of four planets at the same time. In that case, you get another speed up. You get a speed up of about eight. If you have four planetary systems with two planets each, then you get a speed up of almost 12. Note that 12 is actually larger than eight. The fact that we are more than eight times faster is due to the fact that WH Fast 512 has additional optimizations and is not just using these AVX 512 instructions. This is a significant speed up, just to reiterate. Previously, if you wanted to integrate, for example, the solar system, including general relativistic corrections for about 5 billion years, which is how long the solar system has left uh, while the sun remains on the main sequence, you would have to integrate that system before for about a week. Now you can do it in less than a single day. That's a significant speed up. Okay, let me show you a demo of how to run the simulation. I'm here logged in to our local supercomputing cluster because my own desktop machine does not have these AVX512 instructions. If you want to find out if your computer supports AVX512, you can look at the output of catproc slash CPU info. This lists all kinds of information about the CPU that you're using. In this case, you can see that we're using an Intel Xeon CPU. And the important part is in this flags output over here. If you find a command that says, if you find a flag that says five AVX 512, like this one over here, then you're most likely able to run WHFAST 512 on this computer. The first thing, if you want to compile rebound with AVX 512 support is to set the environment variable AVX 512 equal to one. Again, by default, this is set to zero, so you will not have these AVX 512 instructions. Once you have that, you can install Rebound. You need to install it from a local copy, for example, using pip install, that we do here to install our um, to install it within um, the Python framework. I'll show you later how to use it from C. 
Maybe it will take a second to compile. Now that rebound is installed, we can start Python, we can import rebound, we can start a new simulation, and we can add some test particles to it. In this case, let's use the auto solo system as a test case. When you want to use the new integrator whfast 512 you just set sim.integrator equals to whfast 512 and then integrate as you would normally do. For example, for 100 time units. Now, if I do it like this, I will get an error message. The error message says that WS5512 requires exact finish time equals to one. So let's set that. The reason you see this warning message is that the time step needs to be adjusted if you want to get an output at exactly the time of 100. However, Rebound in WSFast 512 does not allow you to change the time step during the integration. That is why the error message occurs. So if we set the exact finish time equal to zero, it just uses a constant time step throughout the simulation and um, the simulation works. And now we've arrived at about 100 time units and you could look at the output. This was the Python version of the a rebound interface. You can also look at the C interface, for example, the WSFAST 512 solo system example. Here, if you look at the make file, you see also that this AVX 512 flag has been set to 1. So with this set to 1, you can compile rebound and then run the simulation. Um, in this default example, it will first integrate the solo system for more 1 million years using WSFAST 512. It will then run the same simulation again, but with the normal version of WHFAST, and then show you how much of a speed up you will get. Okay, with this, you should be able to run your own simulations and accelerate them using WSFAST 512. If you need more information, have a look at the rebound documentation, specifically the pages on WSFAST 512. If you want to learn more about the integrator, check out the WHFAST 512 paper, which came out in 2023. And furthermore, if you have questions or something is unclear, feel free to open an issue on the GitHub repository to get some help. Thank you and see you soon.